All right, moving into the Denver Broncos, as Bender has a hard out for us. We're going to fly through these here. 8-9 last year, same coach Sean Payton, same offense. Payton calls the plays with Joe Lombardi, the OC in his second season. Your starting lineup, Bo Nix, the presumed week one starter. He's quarterback 31 in ADP. Zach Wilson and Jarrett Stidham just Joel. screw them, essentially. Javante Williams, RB31. Jaleel McLaughlin, RB52. Aust- Audric. Estime. Oh, I definitely auto-corrected that one. Sorry. I was like, I was like, Austin Eckler. No, it says Austin Estime, but it's Audric Estime, RB68. And Samaj P. Ryan, RB76. Wide receiver one, Cortland Sutton at 49. Troy Franklin at 75. Marvin Mims Jr. at 76. Josh Reynolds, 97. And uh, the boy, my guy, Tim Patrick, wide receiver 118. Don't <laughs> underestimate that man. Please. Please, God, let him come back from two ACL injuries. Greg Dulcich, tight end one at tight end 32, and Adam Troutman, tight end two, not being drafted currently. Josh, I'll let you quickly talk on uh, Cortland Sutton here. Uh, he's wide receiver 49. He feels cheap for a wide receiver one for a guy who definitely produced last year. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, 10 touchdowns is great, but everything else, not so much. Uh, 90 targets, 770-something receiving yards. So nothing special, but again, you love the touchdowns, and that's just, that's that's all Russell Wilson right there. I mean, for as bad of a season as he had, he had 28 passing touchdowns. I don't think you're getting that this year out of Bo Nix and, you know, however many games he doesn't start. But I think what Sean Payton's trying to do is build this offense the way that he built the Saints. And that, to me, screams Cortland Sutton playing that Marquez Colston role. What's going to be interesting to me, because they had no issue spreading the football around last year, but they had a more experienced number two wide receiver in this offense with Jerry Judy. You don't have anybody like that next to Cortland Sutton this year. Sutton only had a 17.5% target share last year. In my projections right now, I have him right at about 20 But I could see a scenario where Cortland Sutton takes 28% of a target share because... Troy Franklin can't step up in his rookie year and Marvin Mims is nothing more than a kick returner. Like those are very valid situations that could very easily play out for this Denver Broncos offense. And I think at wide receiver 49 prices, Cortland Sutton might be on every single one of my teams going into 2024. And Troy Franklin's bad at football. So (laughs) that doesn't, that really doesn't help. Look, one could argue he made Bo Nix pretty good. So, you know. Hey, listen. There's there's a Maybe. lot going on in this in this offense right now. Listen, it's 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 uh, it's Sean Payton, but it's Joe Lombardi. It's Joe Lombardi's offense, and the reason that Cortland Sutton popped last year. And you know what? I'll take a victory lap, and I'll accept my flowers on this one. I told everybody and their grandmother to draft Cortland Sutton because oh he was going to be the X. He was All going in like the tenth round. Yeah. I was like, just take him. He is the X receiver in a Joe Lombardi system. We saw what happened with yeah. Michael Thomas. We saw what happened with Marquez Colston. We saw what happened and with uh, with uh, Mike Williams last year, so or two years ago, and it was happening for Cortland Sutton. And and that's the way it is. Tim Patrick being healthy could throw the monkey wrench in there because if Tim Patrick does come back, he could oh. challenge to be the X receiver in this system. So I'm a little, I'm not as bullish on Cortland Sutton just yet until I see Tim Patrick, uh, limping around the first time during training camp, but I'm in on Sutton. I love it. I think it's a, it's just a smart play. If you're following what the system does real quick, before we go into Javante Cortland Sutton, currently wide receiver 49 guys around him include Rasheed Rice, Jamison Williams, Curtis Samuel, and Tyler Lockett. Take Sutton of, over all of them. Sutton over every single one of them. So he is currently in a very good spot for those of you that like Cortland Sutton. All right. To the backfield. This one is going to have some some back and forth here. And Bender, we'll start with you. Javante Williams is the RB31. He is coming off a season where he came in injured, but had a full has a full off season now. He's chilling. Should be all good. Healthy, 100% ready to go. Everyone loved him coming out. The injury derailed him. Do you feel good about Javante Williams this year? I do. I love Javante Williams this year, and I love where he's going in drafts, and I keep grabbing him every chance I get. Um, Again, take a look at what Joe Lombardi has done 
with his running backs. He made Alvin Kamara exactly what he is, a phenomenal pass-catching running back. Does he have the capability to take it between the tackles? Yes, he does. Does Javante have that same capability? Yes, he does. We saw with Austin Eckler. How many passes did, did Austin Eckler catch la, you know, two years ago? And then once Lombardi left and it was Kellen Moore, I was like, stop taking Austin Eckler. And what happened? His targets fell off. Uh, every year, Joe Lombardi, uh, his offense, I think over like the last 10 years, I think the lowest uh, – that his uh, his running backs ever ranked in t- in pass his passes thrown to running backs was like third, like he does that he funnels he, and now he's got Bo Nix, who basically made his entire college career, uh, you know, on on checkdowns to the running back. This is taking a quarterback who knows exactly what Joe Lombardi wants to do. Don't make any big mistakes. You'll get your big passes down there, but your bread and butter is your running back, and you want to make sure that that's it. Like Javante Williams. Yes, used all of last year to get himself back. I know that Cecil Lammy, this Denver Broncos beat writer, was like, "Oh, Jaleel McLaughlin's going to be the the number one guy." Jaleel McLaughlin is four foot three and eighty six pounds. When he's Correct. wet, he's a pass catching running back. He doesn't take it between the tackles. I'm telling you, a full like healing season here and a nice off season for Javante Williams. I'm not buying Jaleel McLaughlin. Will get some work, sure. But no way that he supplant Javante Williams this year. Josh? This is what I find interesting with all of this Jaleel McLaughlin talk. Because when you look at like the targets per route run, the yards per route run, those numbers for McLaughlin are very high. And I feel like he's he's more of a, a stat sheet bro kind of player at this point versus like, you know, the film grinders. And are just like, what, what are we talking about here? Like, th- this isn't it, right? But you could see the amount of passing down work that McLaughlin was starting to get. He still was only third in this running back room in targets behind both Samaji P. Ryan and Javante Williams. Javante Williams had a sneaky good pass catching season for a running back last year. But what I find really interesting is how this room could potentially shake out. Because Sean Payton didn't draft Javante Williams. There's a good chance that Javante Williams isn't even on this team at the start of the season. I'm saying there's a chance. I'm not saying it's a good chance or a great chance. Could you're be a listen, small chance. Listen to Cecil Lammy. You're listening no, to, it, you're listening to even a do it who wants to like gobble the wiener of the head coach so that he doesn't lose his locker room privileges. That feels Maybe. like a real that feels like a champagne thing to do, so I don't blame But that him. and that's kind of my point. Like you know, he 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 spent his very first draft pick with the Broncos on a wide receiver and then basically said, yeah, you you still got to beat out Jerry Judy. And then went through and traded Jerry Judy this offseason and still isn't, like, ready to hand him anything, right? He goes through. He didn't draft Javante Williams. He plucks McLaughlin out of nowhere on free agency because he went undrafted and then spends a fourth-round pick on Audric Estime, who – by all accounts, can handle that in-between tackles workload, right? This is what he had with the Saints. He had the the pass-catching back in Alvin Kamara, and then he had the in-between tackles guy in Mark Ingram. If we're projecting this backfield, why couldn't that be Estime and McLaughlin, right? I'm saying it could happen. I love Javante Williams where he is going. I'm not fully discounting Jaleel McLaughlin as a pass-catching back that could take a lot more of that work from Javante Williams. Well, look what, look what Josh just handed me. (laughs) Thanks Josh. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. It's really done some wonders to your brain right now. Love that. Swag dad. I see your comment on Twitch, drop in the trade and we'll bring it up and we'll give you some advice here. Uh, Some guys going around Javante Williams for those listening, Tony Pollard, Javante. Trey Benson, Javante, Devin Singletary, Javante, Brian Robinson Jr., Javante. Tajay Spears, Javante, yeah, Javante over all of them. I would take Pollard over Javante currently, oh. but he's no, the only one else. I would take. Here, Joe, yeah. this one's one yours. <laughs> Benner, what did we say? What did we say going into last year? What did we say after 2022? Pollard is better. As a 1A, 1B guy. It's a split backfield. Mm -hmm. And what do we say going into last year? He's not going to do as well because he's the lead back. He's per carry is going to drop. 
He's now back in a split backfield. Why are we so low on Tony Pollard? It's not that I'm so low on Tony Pollard. It's that I'm so high. So on high on Javante Williams. Williams. Yeah, there you go. Hand yourself that thing. All right, swag dad. <laughs> Uh, ETN in a 2026 third for George Pickens, Zay Flowers, a first next year and a second in 2026. Says he really needs a running back this year and he already has a stacked receiver room. So he would be getting ETN in a third. He would be giving up Pickens, Zay Flowers, a 2025 first and a 2026 second. Obviously, this is Dynasty. Uh, his receiver room will be Diggs, Debo, Higgins, and Neighbors. While that is stacked currently, there's probable changes in Debo and T. Higgins. Mm -hmm. And Diggs is currently contending with a guy who they just gave a nice contract extension to. So, I'm personally staying put. Yeah, that's a lot to give up for ETN, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you, I'd got... be fine doing like Pickens and a one for ETN. That to me is more along the lines of the of the value that I see because yeah, I don't really see ETN as like a like a no doubt top five running back. Like he's getting volume, sure, but the way that this volume has been working for him, he's been tailing off so hard in the second half of seasons, like he needs a break. Like he's yeah. not a, he's not a full on like workhorse no. kind of guy that, that we want in dynasty. Right. I just, I don't, I, I would take advantage of the perceived bump in value that Pickens has package that 2025 first, go get ETN, hang on to flowers and the extra 26 pick. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. Getting rid of the first next year. Isn't too much of an issue by all accounts. Next year's draft is supposed to be, pretty poopy by all accounts it's not supposed to be as low I mean, the wide receiver issue. class will be good but and the running back class will be better the running but, back class is supposed to be good but if you need I mean, a at the end of the day player. you're trying you're still trying to win right like yeah getting etn this year is going to help you win and if you do then that 2025 first is well worth the price so yeah i would yeah it's it's too steep currently but yeah, i don't mind if you wanted to interchange flowers or pickings for the fur in a 2025 first for him, I, I think that's fine. Whoever you like the least, um, or ever the guy you're trading with likes the most guy or girl, I would, I, I would, I would go with that bets to wrap it up here. Top three favorites. Uh, Ryan has Denver will allow the most points in the 2024 season. That's that was an interesting eight. one. I like that. I didn't even know that was a thing. That's plus 800 on FanDuel. <laughs> FanDuel's got some interesting bets. I was looking through <laughs> it earlier today, yeah. Because FanDuel wants your fucking money is what they want. Allowed the six <laughs> most points last year and no big improvements on defense. Plus, he says, the addition of Zach Wilson. And one of our loyal listeners, Emma, says, Bo picks. So that is, that's going to be <laughs> tough for them. Josh, you have Bo picks to win Offensive Rookie of the Year at plus, plus 2,000. Josh really just loves throwing away his money on this show. Insanity. I get the odds are good, but like, really? Well, but again, I mean, you're you're looking at these quarterbacks. Like, these are the guys that just, typically win these awards. Like, just if, go if, to McDonald's, buy a Big Mac meal, and then throw it out the fucking window. Like, that's that's a better use of your ten dollars <laughs> to win two hundred than than waiting for Bonix to disappoint you for eighteen weeks. That, you could do that right now and have the exact same outcome. You lost ten dollars. That's the exact same outcome. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're not betting on Marvin Harrison Jr. to win this award, you can make that same argument for everybody. It's uh, okay. Uh, Bender, you says wherever this prop lands, you're Javante over 55 receptions. That one was interesting. This season. Right? Over 55. Listen, this yeah, season... what do you have? He had like 48 catches, 47 catches last last year, didn't he? Yeah. So I know, I know he was up there in targets. I think he had like 58 targets, which and again, Paul, like, I mean, we'll, Dumber. yeah, we'll definitely see where it lands, but you know, I think that with all of, especially with all of this talk now from, uh, of, of how amazing Estime and Jaleel McLaughlin are, <laughs> keep that prop nice and low, baby. I'll take that over all day long. Audric Estime and his four, seven, five, 40 speed. 
<laughs> I mean, look, Javante Williams ain't much better at four six five or whatever it was that he ran. So listen, we started the show by saying Daniel Bellinger is built like a fridge. I think Audric <laughs> Estime is built like a fucking washing machine. So <laughs> just bookending the show, like an old nineteen seventies washing machine. He's, <laughs> he's like a he's like a nineteen fifties Ford Victoria with no power steering. Like that's. <laughs> that's what, that's what he is. Yeah. Gotta make yeah. Gotta turn the car. Yeah, you really really gonna put all your weight and muscle into it to just make a nice ninety degree turn. He's uh, the rotary phone of running backs. Oh okay. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah. It takes you a while to actually Joe has going. no idea what a rotary what phone is. <laughs> I know what a rotary phone is. I know that my mom lived in a two story house. And if she was on the top floor and somebody in the bottom floor wanted to talk, she had to toss the phone out the window and they caught it and they talked through the phone out the window and then she reeled it back up and then she talked on the phone. I don't know how the fuck they work, but I know that that's what happened. Okay? Technology. Yeah, now, now, do you know kids when you say like, okay, how would you do like the phone symbol? You know, like most people do this. Kids do this now. They do this because yeah, that's how they hold their iPhone. What the, like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, insane. Say, what the fuck is this? Yeah, what the fuck is this? It's a this? Lego movie. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Uh, <sighs> well, boys, 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 it has been a trip. <laughs> I'll tell you that. 